All right. Um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, just to recap briefly, I'm going to start by talking about the letter of interest, uh, eligibility, um, how the, the best practices for application submittals. We'll touch on plan review and the incentive request that completes the cycle for this program. So first off, program eligibility requirements. The program's designed for performance-based compliance with the 2013 Title 24 standards. And LawCap is a program uh, that all of the IOUs in California uh, use. We are focusing, like Shannon mentioned, on the PG&E um, specific territory uh, processes. Um, so any, the, the next requirement, of course, is to be in the PG&E service territory. So any of the new construction um, must have uh, gas and or electric service provided by PG&E. And it is for new construction only of single family homes or duplexes. And the score that we talk about, achieving a CAP score of 84 or lower is in the performance modeling using the CEC's compliance software, so the California Energy Commission software. And of course, you can refer to the program handbook for a full list of all the eligibility requirements. Wanted to talk briefly about something that's slightly new. Um, it's, we've always required an energy consultant certification to sign our Title 24 document. We've accepted the signatures from certified energy plans examiners in the past, but as of January 1st, all residential Title 24 documents submitted to the program must be signed by a 2013 residential certified energy analyst, so a CEA. And this applies to all CAP single family and low rise multifamily projects. So this new policy that just began on January 1st actually updates a temporary rule that allowed 2008 code CEAs and CEPEs to sign the CAP documents until the industry professionals were given an opportunity to earn their 2013 certification for CEAs. And you can always reference the CABEC's KBEX website for additional details. This is a, just a kind of a quick uh, incentive structure showing how the incentive structure works for CAP. The CAP scores range from 100 down to zero. Of course, 84 is required to be eligible for the CAP program. And the entry score of 84 is approximately 15% above Title 24 code for 2013 standards. So an 84 or lower is required. And that's when, when your uh, Title 24 consultant or CEA models all the orientations. Just keep in mind that if one orientation does not meet the 84, if it's higher than 84, the entire project is in jeopardy. It can't, it can't enroll. So you either have to eliminate that plan or make some changes to make it eligible for the program. So typically you can read this for yourself and it's in our, on our WETCAP-PGE website. The incentive structure starts at 300 for a score of 84, and then every point below, down to 75, earns another $100. And then below 75, it's $200 per, $200 per point. So the escalating incentive structure aims to encourage builders to expand their scope of work for deeper energy savings. The average energy per incentive per home is expected to be around 1,000, but of course it can vary dramatically. Uh, 
And this is a very, just again, a quick visual of the entire process for a CAP, the CAP program. You can start with a letter of interest, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail in just a minute. Or you can begin with just the application package itself. So either one of those are triggered to begin uh, submitting for incentive, the incentive program. After the complete application package is received and verified, we'll advise that we're submitting the project over to our plan review team. And then it goes, then the, after the plan review team has it, they will notify you that the plan review is complete or they will respond to you with for comments or something that needs to be changed or added or could be a, a number of things. Once that whole process is finished, then um, the, the last part of it is, of course, having the HERS verification process completed on the construction. And then you can submit the incentive request payment form to receive the incentives. So the letter of interest may be submitted by the builder or the homeowner as soon as there's a commitment to begin the project. The information is required um, to be, we, we prefer everything to be electronically submitted. The letter of interest can be downloaded from our website, and again, I'll show you where that is in just a minute, or provide you the link, or not the link, but it's on our pg&e-cap.com website. And you submit that to TRC at cahp at trcsolutions.com, our general generic website. And you can find the letter of interest on the CAP dash pge.com website under the resources tab and then go over to the left of the page and you'll see uh, a section called CAPS articles and under that you'll find the letter of interest. Remember that if lots have begun, begun the HERS testing and or the drywall installation prior to the letter of interest or the complete application submittal, it would be ineligible to participate. So you need to have those approvals beforehand. The letter of interest also commits the builder or the homeowner to providing a complete application package within 90 days. And that's the electronic date that we get the letter of interest. 90 days from that date is so, so essentially three months to get all of the documentation in. So the application itself, Builder sub submits the complete package, and we're, we have the application checklist that's on the first page of that cap-pge.com webpage. You have an application and an application checklist at the bottom of the page that you can pull up and refer to. The applications that are, the best practice in, in this area is the applications that are filled in completely, no blanks, is very helpful. We need complete information. Total number of the plans need to match the plans that are actually submitted. Those are some areas where we sometimes get the number of plans and the number of lots on the application and then when the documents are submitted for the package, something's off. There's not the same number of plans or there's more plans than we expected. So we always, we'll have to come back and get that clarified from you. Same with the number of lots. If you expect to, to build 50 lots but we get 48 li um, lots on the list, we're going to have to reconcile that before we can move forward. If we have more than 100 lots submitted, we're going to confirm with the builder that you intend to build within the plan cycle. So you need to tell us if you're going to be building all of them and they're going to be completed within the three years or 
if they might lag over. We don't. We have funding. We know through the uh, the end of this program cycle, which ends uh, the end of 2016, and you have three years to get everything finished. But we will want to confirm with you that you're going to you intend like if you submit 500 lots, we want to make sure that you intend to get those done. We can always add lots later, but if you think you're only going to be finishing, let's say. 350, 350. Then we need a we need an accurate forecast so that we can properly plan the the program going forward. This is the application checklist that we've mentioned, and although it's too small to read here, it kind of shows you what it looks like. Once you submit a letter of interest, uh, I will send this particular format back to you and it'll highlight what, what we need from you. The letter of interest could be the first thing you submit. It doesn't have to be submitted. As soon as there's, like I said, a commitment to do the project, it's a good idea to turn in the letter of interest. That gives you 90 days to submit all of your application documentation. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that as well. So besides the letter of interest, we have the full application completed and signed on the second page. We need a full plan set for each of the plans that you're submitting, the lot list and addresses as soon as they're known. Sometimes you have a lot list, but you don't quite have the addresses. That's OK. You can submit them later, but we do need those down the road to pay any incentives. We need PG&E territory verification. You need to let us know that the gas and or service that you're intending to receive incentives on uh, is served in your area of the building. And the Title 24 forms and files that are submitted by your Title 24 consultant and or HERS rater. The equipment documentation, again, for verification purposes, that um, what, what's on the plans is, is the manufacturer's, it, it always lo shows the manufacturer's specifications on those spec sheets, which we need. We need to be able to see the uh, plans that you've uploaded in the HERS registry. So sometimes they get loaded, but somebody forgets to share them with TRC. And we just remind you, you need to share them with us so we can see that that the plans are up there. And then the enrollment survey. And for CAP, a builder, production builder specifically, only needs to complete that survey once in any plan cycle. And we'll continue to use that same uh, survey unless the builder chooses to have one completed for each project. For custom homes, we're going to have the homeowner typically will, will fill out the survey and let us know that it's done and we'll go grab it uh, under the project number or it could be the project name. If it's, a, if it's just a single name, residence, custom home, that's fine too. So we can't move anything forward, i.e. to send it to plan review until we have all the documentation that we need. So we'll keep asking you until we get everything. And we will stay in communication all along the way let you know specifically what's missing. Um, we may call and ask for clarification about something or send an email. Once we gather all of the CAP application, we have all the documents, then it's ready to move on the plan review. And the plan reviewer will notify the team uh, at the beginning that the plan review process has started. And that's kind of important because you must be prepared to respond to any comments from the plan reviewer within 10 days. You want to make sure that if you have a lot eligibility date set, which means that's the date that you're good to go on your building, you, you're, you can begin your building and your testing, um, you can go to the drywall stage. <clears throat> So you need to know that lot eligibility date. But you need to respond to comments within, the, the initial comments within 10 days. 
And there, be, there could be several rounds of comments depending on what the plan reviewer needs. So if there's additional rounds of comments, they have to be submitted within five days. So the best practice, of course, is to return and respond to your comments within either the 10-day or the five-day, whatever is noted on the communication that you receive from the plan reviewer. If those dates are missed, it can jeopardize the incentive on some of the lots. If they get too far along and it hasn't been approved yet, then they won't be eligible for to receive the incentives on specific lots, lots or lot a lot. That's why those dates are kind of important. Post plan review, again, the team will notify the project team of cap, the cap enrollment. You'll get a letter um, with documentation that supports it. Attached to the acceptance letter is a plan check verification summary sheet an agreement, the, the CAP agreement that you originally submitted, the HERS summary and incentive request forms, and then there's an incentive request checklist that's attached. If a production home build, as a, you may, well, if it's a production home, it may also, you may also receive a list of the approved plan types and lot lists that are eligible for the incentives or that are enrolled. And adjustment applications are used to add lots or submit additional plans or revised plans after the plan review is com completed. So before, if you have additional plans, before the plan review is completed, you can just submit them and we'll add them into your package. After the plan review is completed, however, then you need to submit an adjustment application. And it's here on the first, it's on the first page of that cap dash pge.com web page. Uh, if new plans are submitted or they're, they're revised, there will be a, have, have to be a plan check of those specific new or revised plans. And then the incentive request. This is, this is near the end. At the, at the, as, after the home is built and completed all the HERS testing, Along the way, you're ready to submit the incentive request form, or IRF. And this form is going to be pre-populated with some of the information, and it comes in your uh, enrollment package when you're first enrolled in the program. The rest has to be filled out entirely with lot numbers, addresses, the plan name that's used, and orientation. And then a check mark for any additional or applicable kickers that are used and that have been approved. And again, you can review the checklist that's found on that page that I just showed we were just at prior. Right there you'll see the incentive request checklist. And to confirm if a lot is ready for payment, you can contact the HERS rater or log on to the HERS registry. All of the documentation from the HERS Raider needs to be uploaded to the CalCERT's website. And if you have questions uh, and you don't know Lori, Lori McAdams processes all the incentive request forms for the program. Uh, you can give us a call at the main number. I'll show you that number. It's on the last page of the, of the uh, presentation and she can answer any questions about the incentive payments for each and every lot. So here's the website information that I keep referring to. It's the HTTP cap-pge.com web page. And this is very small, but you can see at the very bottom of that page is a checklist and an application. And as I mentioned, if you want to find the letter of interest, click on the Resources tab, which is right up near the top. And then when you click on that page, you'll see over to the left a section called uh, CAP Articles. And listed there is the letter of interest. And that's an electronic version that you can complete and submit to us uh, at that CAP 
at trcsolutions.com web uh, mailbox. There's a whole lot of links and information on this page from uh, incentives and more detailed explanation of the incentives, training, there's previous videos, uh, there'll be this, this particular presentation will be uh, available. Different resources, there's different web, uh, I'm sorry, different newsletters, different forms uh, that you can refer to. And then we talk about our master builder program there. So feel free to click around and look in, in that uh, particular web page. The handbook is there, it gives you a lot of detail. And everything here will be updated to say 2014-16. Everything is staying the same for this year through the end of this year. And now, is there any questions that Shannon might be able to address? Shannon, are you there? Yes, Shannon. sorry sorry about that. I was <laughs> muted. It always takes a few steps to get back to the area where you can unmute yourself. Um, so I don't I don't see any other questions right now, um, but if you have any, now is the time to ask them. Um, and I have a question actually for you, Carol, which is just um, maybe what are the, if you can reiterate, what are the things that, the questions that come up to you the most often or the things you think maybe are a little bit more confusing? Um, uh, I think just, just making sure on the application that uh, the number of plans is shown and the number of lots that are intended to be built by year so that we have a good idea of what to expect for any forecasting. And those are going to have to match up with what is eventually submitted for the application package. Um, we ask for the, the project location. If you don't have an actual street address, we can use cross streets. That works. But just to give us a city isn't going to be quite enough. We need a little bit more. We have to do all this verification to prove to the um, CPUC and uh, everybody else that it's actually in a PG and E service territory. So we do that with zip codes and the addresses because some zip codes can cross over. Some could be part gas and part propane. So we have to verify all that kind of information. But really it's just trying to be as thorough and complete. Um, and if you have questions, let us know and we can try to clarify. If I don't have the answer, I have a lot of technical folks and plan reviewers that can help us. So any questions or comments or anything that come up, please let us know. And is the easiest way for folks to send files to you? Can they do it via like Dropbox or any other kind of plan sharing? Is there any restriction on that? No, as long as I can open it. And if I have a problem, I'll let you know. But Dropbox works. Um, I have people just attach documents that are zipped sometimes if the plans are too much. Dropbox works really well. And um, I would I would add too, um, as I know I'm I'm more involved on the multifamily side, but uh, it really helps when when you name your files really clearly. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I strongly encourage you to do that. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. so um, I have a question. This is a this person's thinking ahead really far <laughs> about the 2016 <laughs> code. So we're we're not even there yet. Um, I uh, I know the 2016 code will take effect in 2017, and I'm not sure we know yet which month exactly that's slated to be. I'm sure we'll host um, a similar webinar. Um, uh, when when we're ready to to use the 2016 code as a baseline for the program, um, I don't I don't know that we're planning any major overhaul of program requirements, except that obviously the program would become more stringent um, because of the the, the more um, uh, stringent code. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
so it's going to include more. Sorry. Go for it. Attics and walls and things like that. Some of the. Yeah. I so there's going to be. There's some new measures. The two that we've been talking the most about. Um, are our high performance walls and high performance attics, which we've we've done a bunch of trainings on. So if you're interested in that, I encourage you to to check out our YouTube channel. Um, there are other code requirements which we will be delivering more presentations on in 2016. Um, for example, lighting. There's an update there as well. So, um, uh, yep. And um, so next question. Uh, how long does plan review normally take on our end? So this is assuming uh, we receive all the documents and we send the email to indicate we're starting review. Carol, do you do you have a ballpark number of how long it, we we do usually take to turn around comments? Uh, they can be turned around very quickly within a week. It could take longer depending on the comments that go out and what we get back. So that actually just really depends on how clean the files are and um, how easy it is for the plan reviewer to go through and verify everything and verify all the energy measures. Uh, of course, workload has something to do with it as well, but uh, we've been turning them around pretty quickly. And so I, I would guess that as, as soon as one week and probably up to several weeks, depending again on what how clean the files come in. Yep. Um, and of course, like some at some points in the year, the program, the plan review team is a lot busier. So if you are mm -hmm. uh, if you are under a rush um, because you're due to start construction, um, I guess, Carol, can folks submit um, uh, an intent to proceed letter after they've submitted an application just to like secure yeah. their their position they could start if you submit a, a letter of interest it locks in a lot eligibility date for the date that that letter of interest is received electronically um, so if you submit it on February 1st then your lot eligibility is February 1st you can begin the, the building the testing the drywall stage however you must sub submit a complete application package within 90 days. So by May 1st, I need all of the documentations or that lot eligibility date goes away and you have to wait until we finish the plan review process. So that's kind of a critical piece. I'm glad you brought that up. So, so the letter of interest does secure. If they've already submitted date. their application, but they're, they're worried that they, um, mm -hmm. Uh, couldn't, you know, if they want to start drywall before plan review is complete, could they submit their their letter um, after having submitted yeah. an application? That's fine, right? Yes, you can do that. And sometimes there's reasons that the application process gets delayed. It might be permitting issues or something else. Uh, so that's a good time to to lock in that eligibility date. If you believe you can resolve whatever the issues are, um, within the 90 days, then get the letter of interest submitted and that locks in the eligibility date from whenever that date we electronically receive it. Um, and Carol, I don't know, um, how much availability is there if folks have questions about their design um, early in the process, if they want to get a higher cap incentive, um, how would someone we go about that? When they're in, when they're getting let me know and I'm sorry I didn't mean to trip over you again. Um, let me know and I will uh, get you in touch with one of our plan reviewers. On lay is one. Uh, Cheryl Lacombe, Megan Daw. There's several that can help. Uh, Matt Christie, of course, can help talk through some design ideas to increase the cap score. So yes, we do offer the de design assistance on the technical side. Great. Um, well, I actually, I don't see any other questions coming in, so this might be our shortest presentation. Oh, no, I see, I see, uh -huh. I see one. <laughs> None of us mind getting out a little early, but um, 
So uh, this question, let's see. So the question is, how long does it take to get the PG&E letter? I'm assuming that means the the uh, incentive reservation letter um, to serve. Oh, the will serve letter. Oh, the will serve. That's we need that up front for the package, and it needs to be a statement by PG&E. They they're pretty familiar with this process, so they have kind of a canned. Um, letter that that a will serve letter that tells it identifies who's who the requester is so the builder the address or the approximate project location and that it is the, the intention is to serve gas and or electric sometimes we have just electric and the project gets propane from another source or it's just the gas incentives and they get electricity from someone else like smud or somebody else but PG&E will spell out what service is provided to that location. Um, and I found that it usually takes about a week for PG&E to, to turn around that Probably letter. about a week. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it's not long. I think you can make a call and get it pretty quickly. And um, I think this is the same for CAP. If, if they're already at the point of uh, establishing uh, an application for service, that, that would that be an acceptable proof as yes. well? Yep. An application for service is acceptable. Yep. Um, uh, and I don't, Carol, do you want to talk a little bit about, um, so say a project receives SMUD for electricity, how does that impact the incentive? Oh, good one. I didn't bring that up. We uh, will share our documentation with SMUD. So we actually, Michelle Waffle is uh, working on that piece of the a project for the SMUD smart home. So we kind of work with SMUD on these uh, applications and we share a lot of the plan review process and documentation with SMUD. So absolutely submit any questions to us and I will direct it to Michelle for the SMUD. I'm not an expert on the SMUD smart home process, but I know that that's there as well as solar or the PV photovoltaic um, process for the NHSP National Solar Homes Program is something that we also collaborate with the CEC who manages that solar uh, NHSP pro uh, process and incentives. So you can also get solar incentives and that is through the CEC but you just let, need to let them know that you're participating in the CAP program and they will contact us and verify the information and and we collaborate and share our plan review documents with them as well. Yep. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that should help. That should, we really do try to um, reduce the paperwork time. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, I guess in my question to you, Carol, I was curious, like, Say a project receives, I guess some of these are more rare, but say say a project doesn't receive um, service from uh, a utility that has a program like CAP. Um, so if they mm -hmm. receive electricity from, um, I don't know, Silicon Valley Power. Um, uh, what would that what would that mean to, for their incentive? Would it be would would it be lower or how how do we calculate that? Well, I don't. We would only. It has to be PG&E serviced utility, um, either gas or electric or both. So if it's if they're getting electricity from another source, um, then we would only pay incentives on the gas portion, and it's a percentage of. The total amount, and I do not know that off the top of my head. Um, same as they, the the area does not is not served for uh, natural gas, and they get propane from another source. Then we'd only pay on the PG&E electric portion. Yep. Um, and both of those are percentage, and I off the top of my head, I don't remember what those are. Yep, that's fine. And and I think when when we're at the point of looking at the plans, um, we can, we'll tell you kind of what range you're mm -hmm. you're going to be mm -hmm. expecting. Um, well, anything else you'd like to add, Carol? No, I just I have my uh, 
I have a slide here that I've just shown, uh, brought up that's the how to contact us. And it's always safe to send all documentation, questions, comment, anything to the cap at trcsolutions.com. You can certainly send them to me at cwaterberry at trcsolutions.com. But um, that cap mailbox is going to be manned, and, and if, uh, if I'm gone, somebody else will be manning it. So somebody's always taking a look at that mailbox. And then please review, um, refer to the www.cap-pge.com. Is it www? I was thinking it wasn't. Uh, yes, it is. It is, okay. Yep. Or the 866-352-7457. And um, this is kind of the team. We, Shannon helps us out quite a bit, especially for marketing. But um, here's your team members that are shown there. Uh, Shannon, will this be posted on YouTube or it'll be on the resources page, correct? Yeah, we we have our YouTube site, so we'll we'll send out an email to everyone that registered for this this webinar and include the link to the recording and also the link to the slide decks available as a PDF. So hopefully that'll be a good reference for everyone. Um, Perfect. Yep. Okay. Well, I think we're ready to wrap up. And if any questions come to mind, um, uh, you can just uh, shoot us a, an email. And we will uh, we will do our best to follow up with you. All right. Well, have a, a great rest of your Wednesday and your lunch hour. And uh, we look forward to having you on future webinars. And also thanks to Carol for presenting. Have a great thanks, rest Shannon. of your day. Great. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.